spring has sprung, and that means it's time to get our gardens ready for planting. Here to tell us all about spring gardening is Group General Manager of the Spruce, Melanie Ooh. Berlay. How are Hi. you? Nice to see you. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. It's well, great to have you here. I am like a awash in the fragrant herbs that are in front It's of always me. fun to garden indoors in a mm. studio with no it sunlight, really no is. windows, right? <laughs> so where should we start? Well, something people don't know is that spring cleaning is not just for inside your home. You absolutely have to dust off your garden too. And you're gonna do that simply by taking a look, removing all of the leaves and brambles and branches that have accumulated over the winter months when your garden was exposed to the elements. Yes, of course. And then okay. you're also gonna want mm. to wash your tools. Oh. So grab them out of the shed or the garage or wherever they are. Why, and then, why wash them? I mean, everything needs a bath once in a while. Right? Yeah. You're gonna just use some on, you know, soap yeah. and water okay. and give them a clean before the season is in full swing. Okay. How do we know how much sun a plant needs? So the answer is often on the tag. You always oh. want to check the tag at the nursery for oh. care tips. But that said, you don't want to buy any plants until you have studied the sun and oh. the way it hits your specific garden, okay. right? right? You want to take a look for a few days, remembering that most plants <laughs> require six to eight but hours of sun. Uh, we're trying the, the to see. Is very, it's tiny <laughs> than the ingredients on it's any like product an in the grocery store. It's like an aspirin bottle. Yeah. I right. can't possibly understand. Super tiny letters, but most nurseries have experts on hand. You can also <laughs> yeah. And magnifying glasses. If you yeah. don't How do we get the, the soil time. ready? So now is a great time to prep your soil. You want to do three things. You want to rake away any remaining weeds, and then you want to give the soil a good turn, right? You want to till it you to want the best that of your soil ability. Turnt. 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 The third aspect is that you want to add some compost yes, you do. or Kelly, fresh the compost. manure. This is my fresh manure from Gelman's Manure Factory <laughs> that he runs out on Long Island. It's stinky but effective <laughs> mm. and absolutely essential mm. step. That's nice this morning. Mm. All right, and how do we plan our gardens? What do you suggest in terms of how we lay it all out? So when you're planning your garden, you want to remember three things, color, height, and weather. In terms of color, the best way to get a lot of color throughout the season is to mix perennials and annuals. Which one is which again? I can't remember. The perennials come back again and again. The, and the annuals. annuals germinate, flower, and die. So process of elimination. Annuals, it doesn't annual, make, and then the next one has sense. to be the other one. Annuals should be the one. No, it it's makes annual. sense because annual it comes is back one. every no, year. No, that's right. That's, the, that's what she said. All right, listen, we'll settle this later. Put your weapon down. Put your How weapon do we down. water properly? Uh, in terms of the watering, you want to make sure you're providing consistent, ample water. But again, remembering that ample might mean something different to different plants. Depending, like, don't right. water the succulent. Right. Right. And then at the spruce, we recommend watering in the in the morning because uh -huh. that lets your plants absorb the water before the sun hits. Oh, little plant, look at your water. And you don't just want to sprinkle the top. Use your finger and sort of figure out whether mm. you've penetrated the soil. And then give me your finger. Yes. And then how do we we want to maintain this to make sure it goes all season. Upkeep is very essential. This is not a plant and run situation. So you're going to do something called deadheading. Oh, which is yeah. Not I know nearly that. as rebellious as it sounds. Let me do it. You're I going got it. To... Are you going to deadhead the yeah, annual or the perennial? You want to deadhead with yeah, me? All I right. Do. So look for a droopy bloom, oh, well. something that's not, something <laughs> floppy, and mm -hmm. just cut it right off. And that's going to promote more growth. Yep. That's it. And then you also want to lay some mulch down late in the spring. That's going to keep weeds down and water in. All right, and tell us about hardiness. So hardiness will give you some indication of your geographic location and which plants will thrive where you are located. It's easy to look up online mm. and yeah, you basically just, as a gardener, you're also kind of a weather person. Yeah, right? that's true. And should we look at the farmer's almanac? Yeah, why not? Let's start with the herbs. Which are good herbs this time of year to plant? All right, so let's talk about cilantro. Cilantro. Cilantro is perfect if you're an impatient person because you can start it now it. in the yeah. cool of spring and it germinates the second it gets warm enough and then it grows really, really fast. Your kind of plant. I, this is made for me and I love it on everything too. What about basil? Basil, which I love. Basil is a fan favorite. We definitely recommend growing it. It's really sturdy. It will 
thrive during those hot summer days. Mm. Just remember, as soon as those white blossoms start to emerge, you want to pinch them off to promote more growth. Yeah, okay. that's the problem sometimes if you're like, if you're out of town and that happens, you're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Just phone me. I'll come over and pinch them right off. <laughs> you're, I mean, when you're out of town. <laughs> uh, all right. And then that's we've got the... lemon balm, oh, lemon balm. which okay. is a lesser Ooh. known herb, but we love it because it's so versatile. It's in the mint family. Take a whiff. And lemon balm. Yeah. Yeah, you can make a tea out of it. You can use some sprigs on your soup can or I, even can I incorporate just, the leaves in can a Can I just salad. try a piece raw right here now? Is yeah. that okay to eat? Go for it. Mm. And? It's like lemony. Wow, how perfect. <laughs> Fresh they, minty They've named now. it appropriately. And what's this final one? Well, this is a pansy, actually. I oh. believe we're a pretty That's a plant. Rose. Yeah, that's oh. a plant. All we're right. not then quite th there yet. Then let's no, this is an edible, this. This is an edible primrose here. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's talk about the vegetables, let's though. Let's talk vegetables. So we <laughs> love to plant lettuce right about now in the cool, wet weather. Oh, whether really? you, Yeah, whether right. you go with a green leaf, arugula, spinach, it's what they call a cut and come again plant, meaning you can pop out to your garden, cut some leaves off, make yourself the freshest salad ever, and do it again a few oh, days like later. That. And so it, good is that efficiency. like lettuce grows from, this is gonna sound ridiculous, the ground. seeds, right? Why yes, okay. most things Because I do. wasn't sure if we, <laughs> certain things you take a little piece of the actual plant and right. you plant it and that's what it grows from, but I was like, right. lettuce isn't that. Here, we have another we pansy We grow leaf. lettuce up on the roof, sorry. <laughs> Not enough space for okay. that. Not enough space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In terms of vegetables, we also love asparagus, which is, requires more patience. It actually takes up to three years for an asparagus plant to be strong enough to harvest, but once it gets there, it delivers for up to 15 years. And it's a perennial well, that, vegetable. That is fuel efficiency. <laughs> perennial vegetable, which makes yeah. no sense. Still, I'm going to stick. I'm sticking to my story that it should be. These should be annuals yeah. if they come up yeah. every year. All right, let's jump to the flower. Sure. Right. Flowers. Here we have. I believe you're holding a primrose, which we love because it comes in sure. all sorts of shapes and sizes. And if you mix a whole bunch of varieties in your garden, the next season you're going to get some cross pollination oh. and some surprise colors. Oh, I like when they cross pollinate. Yeah, it's so exciting. exciting. And then we also have pansies here, uh -huh. which tend to bloom from April to June. So not really a long blooming cycle. Uh -huh. However, they're so bright and cheerful and lovely when they do bloom. And Gelman eats them. He told yeah, me they can, they can be edible? They can be. Can yeah, they be edible? He, yeah. You know, the <laughs> fact that you're still standing and didn't fall asleep from the Gelman briefing <laughs> is a credit to your, your stamina and your endurance. Great well, information, thank though. Thanks for coming.